All right, welcome to a video on vectors in three dimensions. This goes with section 2.2 in the OpenStax Calculus 3 book. So we're going to describe 3D rectangular coordinate system to do our vector arithmetic over again in 3D, and then look at some of the basic planes and spheres. So we'll be using a right-handed coordinate system, uh, which goes along with the set of axes on the right side here. Uh, and the reason we say that's right-handed is that if you take your right hand uh, and imagine your fingers pointing in the direction of the x-axis and then curl them towards the direction of the y-axis, then your thumb should be pointing in the direction of the z-axis. Um, same would go with your left hand for the left-handed coordinate system. The right-handed coordinate system is the dominant coordinate system in the United States, um, though some countries may use a left-handed system. We will always use the right-handed system in this class. Uh, if we have a point in three-dimensional space, uh, we use rectangular coordinates, then we'll represent it by an ordered triple. So it's like an ordered pair, but we have three numbers instead of two inside the parentheses, still separate them by a comma, uh, x first, then y, and then z. So if we had the point one, negative two, three, uh, that would be one in the x direction, positive x, uh, negative two in the y direction, and then three in the z direction to get to that point. Uh, now, when you have the three-dimensional coordinate system, you have three coordinate planes. Uh, each pair of axes creates a plane, and so the x and y axes have an xy plane, and there's a yz plane and an xz plane. The equations of these planes are all a variable equal to zero, and that variable is the one not mentioned in the name of the plane. So the xy plane, uh, that's the equation z equals zero. And this is a lot like if you looked at the x-axis, it would be in two dimensions, the line y equals zero. And then, then the y-axis would be the line x equals zero. So same idea there. Um, and so you do wanna be familiar with the equations of those coordinate planes. Uh, you can think of those coordinate planes as dividing the three-dimensional space up into eight octants, uh, kind of like when we have two dimensions, we have four quadrants. Uh, well, now in three space, we have eight octants. Um, this picture shows the signs of the coordinates in each of the octants. We work mostly in octant one where everything's positive, but of course uh, there are seven other octants uh, where some of the coordinates are negative. So uh, take a minute right now to visualize or sketch out on paper uh, the point negative two, three, negative one. Go ahead and pause the video if you need some time. All right, hopefully you were able to visualize or sketch that. Uh, you probably want to start drawing some of these three-dimensional uh, graphs by hand as much as possible. Uh, you'll get better at it as you try. How about finding the distance between two points of three dimensions? Well, the distance formula is very similar to that two dimensions. It is the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences of the coordinates. But instead of just x and y, we now have z included there. Uh, and you can derive this from the distance formula in two dimensions uh, by drawing this uh, rectangular solid. Uh, and then going from point one to point two, uh, you can look at going in the two dimensional distance here uh, where z does not change. And of course you can use the two-dimensional distance formula for that. Uh, and then the one-dimensional distance formula is just the absolute value of the difference. Uh, and then you can use the right triangle and the Pythagorean theorem to combine those and get this distance formula. Go ahead and use that distance formula now to find the distance between these two points. All right, you should have gotten the correct answer is a square root of 41. Now we looked at the equations of some coordinate planes um, where for the xy plane, it was z equals zero and for the xz plane, y equals zero and so on. Um, well, it turns out any plane parallel to those is of the same form of that one variable equal to a constant. It's just not zero. Uh, and so if you're parallel to the xy plane, it's always gonna be z equals a constant. Uh, if it is the xy plane, it's z equals zero, but if it's some other plane parallel, uh, well, then you just need to know what the z value is. And if the z value is this number c, uh, then it would be z equals c. So again, these are like the three-dimensional analogs of horizontal and vertical line equations in two dimensions. 
uh, where every vertical line was x equals a number and every horizontal line was y equals a number. So try to find the equation of a plane that passes through this point, 3, 11, 7, and is parallel to the yz plane. Right, so parallel to the yz plane should be x equals a constant. And since the x number is 3, this should be x equals 3. How about an equation of a plane passing through those three points? You should have noticed that all three points have the same y value, negative 2. And so it should be y equals negative 2. Now, what about spheres? So the equation for a sphere with center A, B, C and radius R is very similar to the equation of a circle with center A, B and radius R. Uh, we just again add on the third dimension there. And uh, keep in mind that the sphere is just the spherical shell, the points on the outside, right? Uh, if you want to talk about a solid object, including the interior, you'd, you'd refer to it as a ball and not a sphere. Uh, and we'll come back to that sphere in the uh, methodology. All right, now we haven't mentioned vectors yet, but uh, we're just going to take the vector notation from before and add on the third dimension. So in component form, it's x, y, z. Uh, in component basis vectors, it's i, j, k. And uh, you can see here a vector pointing from the origin to the point 2, 4, 1. I'm just going to throw these properties up because they're all the same as the two-dimensional arithmetic properties for vectors. We just add on z wherever you think you would. So everything's done component-wise. Uh, magnitude is still square root of the sum of the squares. Unit vector is still dividing by the magnitude. Uh, and so you should be familiar with all these from the last section. All right, let's give it a try. Why don't you take the vectors v and w here in three dimensions and find 3v minus 2w. Right, so the correct answer should be C, negative 8, 29, 15. Right now, given the same vector W, the same vector? Yeah, same vector W. Uh, let's find 5 times the magnitude of W. Again, if you need some time on these, feel free to pause the recording. Uh, the correct answer here is 5 times square root of 2. So you should have found that the magnitude of W is square root of 2. And you just multiply that by five. So the correct answer is D. Uh, so this presentation uh, by Matthew Watts does contain images and text from the Calculus 3 Open Stacks book, uh, CC by NCSA uh, by Jed Herman and G. Strange.